O oh, Night Castellan. For a year you stomp the meta flat, behind your three up invo save, and a million re-rolls. Let's see how much of your former glory remains. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, and the final video in our mini-series Night Fortnite. Over the last couple of weeks, we've looked at every single unit in the Codex, as well as every single Warlord trait, Relic, and stratagem the book has to offer. I'm tempted to review a few of the Forge World Knights at some point in the future, so if that's something that would interest you, please let me know down in the comments below. Today though, we're going to be looking at the Boogeyman from hundreds of tournaments over the past year or so, the Knight Castellan. In this video, we'll take a look at his rules, any buffs and combos that we can use to make him stronger on the tabletop, and how I would run one on the tabletop at the present. In the background, the Castellan is a towering fortress of incredibly destructive firepower. Its volcano lance and plasma decimator can lay waste to entire armies if given enough time. It will often be fielded at the back of a night lance, laying down horrendous fire support while his brothers advance up the field to engage the enemy in glorious combat. This fluff quite accurately portrays his role on the battlefield, so let's take a look at his stats. The Knight Castellan is a Dominus Pattern Knight with all the benefits and drawbacks that entails. His movement is just 10, so a bit slower than the Questorus. He has a weapon skill of 4 up, a ballistic skill of 3 up, strength 8, toughness 8, 28 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 up save. As usual, he'll degrade when he gets 2 half wounds left. His ballistic skill becomes 4 up and his movement drops to 7, and then again at 7 wounds, ballistic skill 5 up, and movement just 4. So a bit less manoeuvrable and a bit worse in combat than your standard Questorus pattern knights, but with a few extra wounds. Now his armaments are quite impressive. He has a mighty plasma decimator, volcano lance, 2 shield breaker missiles, 2 twin siege breaker cannons, 2 twin melter guns, and of course his titanic feet. You have the option for trading out one set of siege breaker cannons for another two missiles. I definitely wouldn't bother with this, the siege breaker cannons are pretty decent, and if you take the extra set of missiles, you won't even be able to fire them until turn three, when the Castellan might well have already been killed. If you swap out for the shield breaker missiles, then it'll save you 11 points, but honestly, I wouldn't bother. In my chosen loadout, the Castellan comes to 703 points which was a big increase in one of the FAQs. He used to sit at around about 600 points, so Games Workshop really took a big swing at him with the nerf bat. And as someone who used to run the Castellan, rightly so, in my opinion. But before we get onto that, let's take a look at all of his weapon options. Let's start with the really big guns first. The Volcano Lance has an 80 inch range, it's heavy D6, strength 14, AP minus 5, and damage 3D3. You can re-roll failed wound rolls when targeting titanic units with this weapon, and it's just all round a one-shot killing machine that has every chance of wiping out a battle tank in a single shot. 80 inch range means it will be able to hit whatever it wants. Heavy D6 means it is quite swingy and really quite a good option for using a command point re-roll to re-roll those number of shots. Strength 14 means wounding toughness 7 and lower on 2s and wounding toughness 8 on 3s. AP-5 essentially ignores pretty much all armor saves, and damage 3d3 means that you've got quite a reliable damage output there as well. On average it'll do 6 wounds per failed save, and it doesn't tend to vary quite as much as say a 2d6 roll might do. On average dice, if you point this against a toughness 7 vehicle without an invul save, you'll usually do around about 11-12 to 12 wounds though this can be quite a swingy weapon, mainly because of the heavy d6 profile. If you roll a 6, then you could be doing something ludicrous, theoretically up to 54 wounds, if every single dice roll goes your way. But then if you roll a 1 for the number of shots, you could potentially do nothing if your shot misses. With this gun, I'd typically point it at an undamaged enemy battle tank or equivalent, and I wouldn't bother firing any of your other guns at that. This will allow you to capitalise if you have a big swing and not waste any other firepower on that one unit. Around once every second turn, this should absolutely delete a enemy heavy hitter. So I find it's best used firing at something that doesn't necessarily have to die this turn, but would help out the game as a whole if it did. Moving on, we have the Plasma Decimator. This is a 48 inch range, heavy 2d6 plasma gun essentially. It's got strength 7, AP-3 and damage 1, and you can overcharge it to strength 8, AP-3, damage 2. Now what people like to do with this is to give it the Relic Cause Wrath, 
which if you're running a Castellan, in my opinion, is a mandatory upgrade. You have to be a Mechanicus house to give it this, so that makes Mechanicus houses better for Castellans as a whole. Cause Wrath increases both the strength and damage characteristic by 1 on this weapon, so in overcharge mode, your strength 9, damage 3. So it's sort of fairly equivalent to firing 2d6 last cannons at your opponent with this gun. Obviously you do have the chance of taking a couple of mortal wounds, but this is a small price to pay on a high wound model, when you get that ludicrous damage output from it. The twin siege breaker cannons are not to be underestimated, they're 48 inch range, heavy 2d3 each, strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage d3, good for firing at light vehicles, or chipping away at some medium infantry wherever they might be on the battlefield. Not as likely to do ludicrous things, but you can sometimes roll hot with them, and I've killed a rhino tank in a turn with just these guns alone when I've got lucky. Next up we have the shield breaker missiles. This is a 48 inch heavy 1 weapon with a strength of 10, AP minus 4 and damage of D6 and it ignores invul saves. You can only launch 1 per turn and they're 1 use only weapons so once they're gone they're gone. I typically only run 2 of these because you want to be maximising the damage in your first couple of turns and it's much better to be firing two siege breaker cannons and a missile per turn for the first couple of turns compared with just one siege breaker and a missile. Because this ignores invul saves, it's often worth firing at things like enemy knights and of course you can use the strats to target characters which we'll get onto later. Finally the Castellan has two twin melter guns, so that's four shots at 12 inches with strength 8, AP minus 4 and damage d6 and these are very easy to underestimate. With 4 melter shots like this, it's almost akin to having another primary weapon when your knight is up close and personal to the enemy. It can make advancing your castellan just a little bit just to get these in range of the nearest enemy heavy hitter really quite profitable, as 4 melter guns are pretty decent firepower. Obviously you have to weigh that up against putting your very expensive model in harm's way, so you'd have to make that decision based on the enemy you're fighting. Finally we have the titanic feat. Strength 8, AP minus 2, damage D3, and you make 3 attacks per your base profile attack with this weapon, meaning the Castellan is certainly no slouch in melee, and if there are any enemy light infantry units about, then it's certainly worth charging in to step on them in close combat if you've got no other reason to stay out of close combat. Like all knights, the Castellan has a ion shield for a 5 up invul save. The rotating does cost more, it costs 3 command points to make it a 4 up, which is a huge investment. It explodes even more ferociously than most knights. You roll 2d6 when it dies, and if either one of those is a 6, then it's going to blow up. And if both are a 6, then the explosion radius goes out to a massive 3d6 inches. You really don't want this thing exploding in the middle of your gun line like that. Finally, as with all knights, it has the super heavy walker special rule, meaning it can fall back, shoot, charge again, and it can fall back over infantry models, and it ignores the negative to hit for moving and shooting heavy weapons. So, all in all, the Castellan is a very expensive points-wise shooting powerhouse. It has enough guns to kill a decent amount of the enemy army in one go, turn one. It has some extra nastiness thrown in from the melter guns if you get up close, and if it has a decent target to charge safely, then there's no reason not to have it step on a bunch of enemy infantry in melee as well. Compared with other similar knights, it is really not very durable for its points cost. You're paying 25 points for every wound of Castellan you have on the tabletop, which is pretty enormous, say, if you compare it to a Knight Warden. They only pay 17 points for every wound of Imperial Knight, so by including this in your army, it's not going to be anywhere near as durable as it would have been otherwise, so you better make the most of that enormous firepower. Now let's take a look at the many ways that we can buff this unit and get the most out of it on the tabletop. Let's take a look at the household traditions first. For the reason of wanting to include Cause Wrath and also the very nice Machine Spirit Resurgence stratagem, I would strongly recommend taking it as a quest of Mechanicus household. Cause Wrath is among the best relics in the book, and with such an expensive model, you really can't afford to be having it hit on anything lower than threes, so Machine Spirit Resurgence is sort of vital. Any of the quest of Mechanicus households can do well with a Castellan, though I personally prefer House Raven for their stratagem. To briefly mention the others, House Volker is a reasonable pick mainly because of their stratagem. Saturation Bombardment will give you an extra hit for every roll of a 6 when this knight hits, and is equivalent to getting a basically 25% firepower boost 
which is very very nice on such a big model carrying so many guns. If you're using House Volker, then I would use that stratagem on the Castellan every single turn. House Tyrannis is an interesting defensive pick. This could give some protection to your Castellan getting alpha struck. If your Castellan gets gunned off the board turn 1, then you've lost over a third of your army, and you've probably lost the game. Tyrannis both makes the Castellan a lot more durable, with that 6 up feel no pain, and also can let you spend these stratagem points to get the knight back up after your opponent has gunned it down and this will allow you to at least have one full turn shooting with the Castellan, so another very strong household. Crast will give a nice buff to the melee profile of the knight, and their warlord trait first knight is worth considering. If you're not going for Ion Bulwark, or particularly if you're going crazy and running two Castellans, then first knight will let you reroll ones and up the damage output of the knight. Also their relic headsman's mark is one of the few relics that I would consider swapping Cause Wrath out for, it massively increases the damage against titanic units and other vehicles too, to the extent where I'd say it's worth taking this relic instead if you're going House Crast. But finally we come to House Raven. It was the most competitive household for the Castellan in its heyday, and I still think it is now. The caveat is that you need to have enough command points to support the Castellan with. In my tournament list, I used to run a Castellan, Warden and Gallant, backed up by two Guard Battalions. You can still easily do this now, though obviously it's not quite as efficient what with the Castellan going up in points cost. The Raven Household Tradition can actually be quite useful to get some movement out of the knight. The extra d6 roll for advancing will often let you get to a line of sight that you might not have been able to draw otherwise, but the main bonus is the Raven Stratagem Order of Companions. Now this is the ultimate stratagem for the knight Castellan. It used to be two command points, and it is printed that way in the knight codex, but they increased it to 3 command points, largely because of this combo, and it is still absolutely worth it on your Knight Castellan. You use it at the start of your shooting phase, and you pick a House Raven model from your army. Until the end of the phase, re-roll all rolls of 1 for that model, that includes hit rolls, wound rolls, damage rolls, and rolls to determine the number of shots. Now to me, it wasn't initially obvious how powerful that rule is. Sure, you get to re-roll some 1s to hit some wounds, but that's a lot of command points to be investing but it turns out the Castellan is pretty much ideal target for this. Firstly, because it has so many guns, that getting all of those buffs off on every single weapon is useful, but also, every single one of its guns triggers at least three sets of reroll ones, and the Volcano Lance and the Siege Breaker Cannons actually trigger all four sets of reroll ones for that one knight. Essentially, having reroll ones gives you a one-sixth damage output boost, no matter where you do it in the sequence of shooting. So reroll ones to hit and reroll ones to wound actually give you the same damage output boost. But the thing is that they stack. So if you have better shooting, those reroll ones are more valuable on the wound roll because obviously you get more hits. And the same for the damage roll. If you've got more hits and wounds, then rerolling more damage rolls is even more valuable. This maths out to the extent where it's actually an 87% boost to the Siege Breaker Cannons and the Volcano Lance. In real terms, that means that, for example, if you fired your Volcano Lance at a knight with a 4 plus invul save, without any buffs, you typically get 6.2 wounds after saves have been taken. With all of companions active, that jumps up to be about 11 wounds, so you're getting 5 more wounds on a heavy target, and that's just literally out of one gun. The exact same effect is applied to those Siege Breaker Cannons, and the Melter Guns, Plasma Decimator, and Shield Breaker Missile get almost as much out of it. The Plasma Decimator has a random number of shots, and the other two have random damage characteristics, so they're still getting a phenomenal boost. It's this combo when combined that was used by the Castellan to essentially annihilate any enemy tanks off the face of the battlefield, and why it made tanks not a good idea to take in the meta at Warhammer 40k for quite a long time, because you knew that if you faced a Castellan, then it was quite capable of easily picking up two tanks per turn, and potentially even more if it rolls incredibly well. The Raven Castellan still has exactly the same damage output as it ever did, but of course now it costs a few more points, and its defensive capabilities have been toned down a bit too, which is why you don't see them everywhere these days. Moving on to relics and warlord traits, if I were running a Castellan I would certainly strongly consider the Iron Bulwark warlord trait, because rotate iron shields cost 3 CP rather than 1 for Dominus class knights, you may as well make this knight your Ion Bulwark knight, so you never have to pay loads of command points for rotating on your Castellan. 
As we've said, the knight is incredibly destructive in its offensive capabilities, but isn't actually that defensive, so anything you can do to make it more defensible is well worth it. In terms of relics, I'd typically take Call's Wrath, unless I was facing an army with literally no heavy infantry or vehicles in it. If I was crassed, I'd strongly consider swapping this out for the Headsman's Mark, though, which can buff the rest of its guns and not just the Plasma Decimator. In terms of stratagems, we've already mentioned quite a few. Ion Aegis is an option on Dominus Pattern Knights, but as we mentioned, the Castellan is really the thing that you need to be considering protecting, rather than any friendly Imperium unit standing next to it. Noble Sacrifice, to try and explode it when it dies, could be useful, as it's got such a high chance of exploding. If you do find that it's going to go up, you may as well make it go up in style if, if you're surrounded by enemy units. Rotate Ion Shields is extra expensive on Dominus Class Knights, so I'd want to avoid this by taking Ion Bulwark. Oathbreaker Guidance System can be used to launch a Shieldbreaker Missile as an enemy warlord. It costs 3 command points now, so it's a pretty huge investment, and it's not all that reliable in taking out a character that has 3 or more wounds. You might fail the hit roll, the wound roll, or the damage roll. Interestingly enough, if you are going absolutely CP mad on the knight, and you are using Order of Companions, you could consider using this too, as Order of Companions will make that shot a lot more reliable. Still though, that will be burning 6 command points in one manoeuvre, there might be better things that you can do with them. Machine Spirit Resurgent is a very good pick on a Castellan, for one command point to get it firing on its full profile again is an absolute steal. You need this thing to be firing on full ballistic skill at all times. And we've already mentioned some of the household specific stratagems, Order of Companions is amazing, and a Castellan is the only thing that I'd typically use it on. Volker's Saturation Bombardment is a flat increase to damage for one command point, and should probably be used every turn if you're running a Volker Castellan. And our Darkest Hour from House Tyrannis could get your very expensive model right back up, ready to lay down the hurt again next turn. So let's look at how I'd field one on the battlefield. I'd personally always build it with the Iron Bulwark Warlord trait and the extra Siegebreaker cannon, typically using Call's Wrath, and I'd personally choose to field my Knight Castellan as Raven, though any of the other Mechanicus households are a acceptable substitute if you want to have their bonuses for your other knights in the detachment. You could potentially field a lone Castellan alongside an allied Imperium army, and use all of the command points to soup up that Castellan's firepower, or you could field it as part of a Knight Lance, and have just a couple of extra Imperial allies on the sides to fund it with command points. I do feel though that the Castellan is a knight that you should be spending a lot of command points on, otherwise you're just not going to get the true value that you need to out of that enormous 700 point investment. On the battlefield, your main goal is to keep the Castellan firing at maximum efficiency for as long as possible. Whether you're going first or second, you need to position him with good lines of sight so he can maximise the damage output that he can do while taking the minimum amount of return fire. You can do this if you're going second by counter-deploying, so that the enemy's guns might be out of range turn 1, and then you can move into firing range with that still very decent 10-inch movement on your turn 1. You also need to consider how important the Castellan is in your matchup. If you're fighting anything with a lot of big hard targets, such as enemy knights or a gun line with a lot of tanks, then the Castellan is going to be very, very important. However, against some armies, say when you're fighting a horde of plague bearers, the Castellan's only going to have limited use, and it might be more important to protect your units that are great at killing hordes. Hordes are one of the Castellan's main weaknesses, and when you're building a list with a Castellan in, it's absolutely vital that you have enough supporting units to be able to clear hordes. An allied Lehman Russ Punisher, or a few Wyverns, could be good if you're going with some Guardsmen, or perhaps a few Avenger Gatling Cannons if you're staying within Codex. In terms of Gunnery Command, you need to choose which targets your Castellan is going to hit with which weapons. As I mentioned earlier, I'd typically fire the Volcano Lance at a target that's got a lot of wounds left, and hope for that magic damage spike where it just blows the tank to bits in one shot. I'd more typically use the Plasma Decimator or Call's Wrath for putting a good slog of very reliable damage on a hard target, particularly, say, if it was something that fell into the right multiple of wounds. Say there was a tank with either 6 wounds or 9 wounds left when you're firing Call's Wrath at them. 
for example, to be just as likely to off a tank with 7 wounds as it would be with 9 wounds because its damage comes in flat 3s. If the enemy is advancing towards you, you need to think about when it's going to be the right time to put those melter guns to work. I typically screen your Castellan well against an advancing enemy, and when heavy hitters get within 20 inch range, move it forward and let the first heavy hitter eat a bunch of melter guns to the face. You'll need to balance the benefits of this with the risks of exposing your Castellan to more damage. Those 28 wounds should keep it safe for a turn or so, but there exist plenty of units in 40k that could happily one-shot a Castellan if they get into melee with it. Speaking of melee, don't underestimate the damage a Castellan can put out itself. At top profile, it'll still get an average of 6 strength 8 minus 2 damage d3 hits, and that could be enough to finish off a heavy hitter before they even get to swing. I've often had people underestimate the Castellan's melee damage output, putting an infantry squad, for example, right next to it, assuming that I'll have to turn the guns on other things but it can be very efficient when you can shoot all of the guns at different things, maybe shoot some melter guns at the nearest infantry squad if they have no better targets, and then charge in to clean up the rest of them. In particular against gun lines, there's no real reason not to have the Castellan advancing forward as part of your advancing night force. If the enemy doesn't have any real close combat threats, and most of their firepower is quite long ranged, then you're not really gaining much from keeping the Castellan back and you may as well have the chance for him to step on some enemy infantry units while he goes about his business of gunning everything down with those enormous weapons. If you are advancing the Castellan like this, I typically keep him behind the other knights that are going forward and try and make him less of a easy target for the opponent to fire all of his weapons at. If the Castellan can only be targeted by some weapons, usually your opponent will focus on one of the other knights, which is typically going to be a win for you because the Castellan is going to be at least a couple of hundred points more than most of your other knights, and being ignored is great. In a good matchup where the Castellan has a lot of tough enemy vehicles to fry, I'd certainly consider using Order of Companions, turn 1 and turn 2, if I had the command points for it. To be worth it, the Castellan really has to beat down all of the enemy armoured threats as quickly as possible, and maximising the damage output in the first couple of turns is what's going to let you get to the point where the enemy army isn't going to be able to deal with your knights anymore. So how does the Castellan stack up against the other knights in the Imperial Knight Codex? I'm afraid to say that now he's increased 100 points, and just as importantly, now they have FAQs that you can't rotate Ion Shields to give him a 3 plus invulnerable save, he is quite a risky thing to include in an army. Because he's 700 points, and compared with other knights, is really quite fragile for those points, you can have a very, very bad game if you're facing an opponent's army that has the guns to focus fire down a knight with a 4 plus invul save in one turn. It now matters enormously who's going first. If you're playing against a guard gun line and you go first with your souped up Castellan, you might be able to kill two or potentially more tank commanders turn one with his firepower plus the rest of your armies. Conversely, if your opponent goes first, with a decently structured gun line with a whole bunch of tank commanders and basilisks, for example, they could easily down your castle and turn one, despite that invul save, and then you're in the very tricky spot of trying to fight a 2,000 point army with only 1,300 points of your own left. This problem also exists against several other armies. Space Marine gun lines are getting stronger these days, and Eldar flyers can be particularly nasty for offing knights quickly with their combination of Doom and Jinx plus all of the guns that their flyers, dark reapers and fire prisms will typically be bringing to bear. When you could access that 3 plus invulnerable save for him, you could be almost certain that he'd still survive first turn, despite all of the hate that could be thrown at him, and then will be ready to strike back in your first turn. Now you can't, you can't be anywhere near as certain that that's going to be the case, and it really does open you up to being hit hard first turn. It's for these reasons that I changed my Castellan Warden Gallant list into a Crusader Crusader Gallant list, and used the save points on some tank commanders. I still think that the Castellan is an incredibly strong option, and is stronger than most people give it credit for. In some matchups, it could genuinely win the game pretty much by itself. Any matchup where the opponent has multiple expensive vehicle units is a great matchup for the Castellan, who can have an absolute field day likely killing two or more of these a turn when you have Order of Companions up. If you're seeing a lot of vehicles in the meta, a Castellan may not be the worst pick. He's certainly not a bad unit by any means, 
but I can see why people have shifted towards the much more durable Knight Crusader and taken the loss of some firepower for increased survivability and therefore more reliability on games where you go second. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, particularly if I've got any rules wrong, I'd like to find out. And also let me know if you're interested in any further Imperial Knights videos. I'm quite tempted to cover the Armager Moiraxes and the Knight Porphyron in the coming weeks, so watch this space for more. If you've liked this, feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics or to support me on Patreon, as making these long videos takes a really, really long amount of time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.